Okay. I'll be off um, screen most of the time because I'm at my mom's rehab center. Right on theme. Yeah. Sorry to hear about her break. Okay, so um, we don't have minutes still and it's gonna be a while before we have minutes. So I'm just gonna skip right over that so that we can get into um, into the meeting itself. And right now we'd start with public comment, but I we don't have anyone from the public attending. So we can launch into the, oh, Ben's coming. Why don't we just hold on just one second because he's going to log on in just a sec. So actually, it'll give me an opportunity to open up a document too. So bear with me one second here. Uh, I don't see him yet, so I guess let's see. Well, I thought we could start with going over the MOU and talking about the MOU. Um, I don't know if what exactly folks were looking for for clarification, but I thought this might help because this is our existing agreement. So if you wanted to start with that, um, we could do so. Ben, are you are you hearing us? Are you with us? Ben, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. You have you're breaking up, so we can't hear you. I, I, yeah, I. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right. Okay, we see you're in motion, so that's okay. Um, we were just gonna start with, um, I was just saying we don't have the minutes to review right now. So we're gonna start, um, we don't have public here for public comment. So we're gonna start with review of the MOU. And I know um, I'm. this agenda was based on a suggestion from uh, Leah folks, so, um, I wasn't sure if there was a specific aspect of the MOU that you wanted to focus on. Um, so I did send it to you all earlier today. Um, you should have had it from way back when, when we did it, but I just resent it uh, so that people would have an ability to open it up and take a look. So was there something specific you all wanted to discuss or review? The role of the community. Okay. So let's see, I'm just trying to find that. Let me find, okay. Uh, when you say community role of the lead community or community members? Community members. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Well, why don't I just, I'm gonna share my screen. So you'll have to forgive a little bit of motion here, but um. Okay, can you all see that? Yes. Okay, so is it big enough? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is for me, but I don't know about anybody else. Are others good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, just wanna make sure. All right, um, so we'll go to this section, which is the, which is the um, let's see. So, right, this is just the very beginning of the document, so we're not far into the document at all. Um, but, um, so um, here's the section on the partners group. 
which is basically really the partners are technically, I think, the um, three communities. Um, let's see. Do partners group shall hold meetings. Okay. Um, okay. Then we're moving on to the responsibility of the parties participating Valley Green Energy. So there's the role of the lead community and the MOU parties, but technically the MOU parties are the three communities. So let's see, then there's the role of the consultant. Um, I don't think there's anything in there about community input. Um, yeah, I'm looking. I'm just trying to find. I thought there was somewhere that it was referenced, but I don't think so. No. Yeah, um, I don't think it I think is. The, the point is that we spent a, a lot of time while putting the joint powers entity document together on um, community input and community involvement, community advisory committee. And so... Um, hoping either, you know, we'll go forward with the joint powers entity and including that or somehow included in the MOU. Um, so the MOU is through the three communities. I don't think we would be adding um, a community. I mean, I can ask, but I don't think we would be adding like a, community representation as part of the MOU itself. But I I think we have been operating with community involvement from the get-go. So I'm not so sure why that would be any different. I don't think there's anything we're doing or haven't done where we haven't been transparent um, or you haven't had involvement. So I'm not sure, like to me right now, and the more I'm sort of learning as we're doing this and the more, you know, at the beginning, I was 100% on board with JPE, but I think I wasn't sort of fully understanding what that meant. And the more we're going along, I'm understanding that to me, that becomes just a huge administrative burden. It really does. And I don't think there's any, I don't understand what we can't achieve with what we've got set up now, especially with you all set up as a nonprofit um, advocacy group and our work with you, I don't understand what isn't working with that or what can't work with that. Well, for example, um, we requested um, a meeting um, to discuss um, the outreach and education responsibilities. And um, as far as I can tell, anyway, that was either ignored or, you know, brushed off. Um, and um, that left us, the, the outreach and education community committee of um, Leah, um, to imagine what we should be doing. And uh, it wasn't until some conversations occurred later that we got clarity on the fact that the municipalities were actually out doing the outreach for the communities, of the organizations that were in the DPU proposal. So therefore, you know, once we knew that, <laughs> then we could go move on. But we didn't know that. And we assumed that we were responsible for doing all the outreach and and clearly that was wrong but um how that pertains to um this discussion right now is that if we had a community advisory committee that had official representation we could perhaps call a meeting ourselves um, um or have more um valued um requests, more value to our requests for a meeting um, because it was officially part of the committee. I, I hope that made sense. It did make sense. Thank you. Um, 
No, that totally made sense. Th and thank you for that, Adele. Um, I will say your, uh, to say that your request was ignored feels a little personal. So I'm going to take it. I'm trying not to take it as personally, but I do a little bit. I, I don't ever try to ignore you all. I think at the time there was just a lot going on and we were trying to move things forward and we were having quite a bit of communication directly with the consultant on what we needed to do because the energy, the outreach and education plan that was designed and developed was for the municipalities. I mean, we were expected by the DPU, not even just the consultants or DPU expected us to do certain things and we had to do them. So I think there was maybe some confusion. I don't think we ever said officially that the outreach and education would only be on you all because it couldn't be. There were things we absolutely had to do and it said it right in the education and outreach plan. So I felt like I, in my mind that was clear because in the plan it was like, these are the things the three municipalities will do. So I, in my understanding, it was always that the education and outreach that Leah would do is really in part beyond what those things were. It was the stuff that you would do with community members, like once our official time frames of initial outreach were over, like as we go along now, we want to get people who um, have third party providers on board, right? So we would hope that that's the kind of thing that you all would maybe take a lead on and help do more directly with community members in trying to get more education about about that out to the community. So I think I was, I, my understanding was that it would always be like above and beyond and more direct community outreach about those types of things, not like what was in the plan that the DPU is expecting us to do. Yeah. So, you know, that's all that needed to be said. And when we finally realized that, um, that if through conversations with municipal staff, then then we we knew what direction we should take. But until that time, we didn't understand that. So, um, so the way it's pertinent to this topic is that. Um, and perhaps the next topic as well, the the role of Leah um, is um, w clarity on our role and uh, who can call a meeting and who can't. And, um, um, you know, what if um, one party is requesting a meeting and, you know, does it, does it mean that... Um, you, Stephanie, have to decide every time that um, that a request is being made. Uh, and you have to decide whether that's a meeting is justified or or not. Um, clarity would be helpful. Right. Well, I will say so. It is. I'm going to go back to the MOU if I have it open. I mean, it is a responsibility of the lead community to be the one to call the meetings to order. So in a sense, yes, it is. Um, but I think, you know, I feel like for the most part, unless there was a real reason or we had, you know, things weren't happening, there wasn't a reason to call a meeting to order because we were either waiting on action from other parties it doesn't make sense to me to call a meeting to order just to have a meeting if other parties are still working on something like, for instance, legal review that take took a long time, which was no fault of mine or anybody else's. But there was no reason to call meetings to order during that time because, quite frankly, you know, Ben and I... Um, and I mean, Tom has his own separate business, but as municipal staff, we have lots of other projects we're working on. So for us, we can't always make this the, this isn't always going to be the number one priority of that particular week, you know, so, and I don't mean it to be, um, it's, it's not to be dismissive of this effort at all in any way, shape or form, but I feel like for the most part, unless there was a reason, I've if you've asked for something, I've done it unless there was a reason. And I, I apologize if I didn't communicate the reason sufficiently the last time. So I do apologize for that. But I think how it works is that if we don't already have a scheduled meeting, then you can reach out to me and I will organize a meeting. But I think 
I do agree that maybe getting back to a schedule right now, I really wouldn't do it more than once a month. We just don't have stuff a lot going on right now. It's going to take a while for things to really get up and running and build. And I would say the emphasis on what we should be focusing on right now is just trying to get as many people on board um, as we can that are on third party supply. Like that to me seems like the big effort that we should be doing right now. So Ben, do you have any thoughts about, about this too that you want to add? I mean, you know, I just feel like this is a, it's a it's a project that's launching people haven't gotten their first bill <laughs> um it you know the yeah you want to you want to set it up let it run see if there are problems and if there are no problems do something else <laughs> i mean that's that's been my my feeling about it is is that actually things have gone pretty smoothly and 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 pretty well um, and that we're about to find out, uh, you know, who's, who's left on this list of third-party suppliers. We're going to work with the, uh, um, the consultants so as to limit our liability to, to, to reach out to them. Um, and, you know, and then there'll be this next level of, okay, we've gotten some of them through this, this form of reaching out. And then we might need to come up with another way, but like, why? Why put a lot of effort into something if we can do it with less effort? Tom, I wanted to give you an opportunity to speak as well. I know you've been distracted this last month or so, or even more. So I no total pressure if you don't have much to say, but just wanted to give you an opportunity. No problem. I had to find the mute button. Um, no, I mean, um, I feel like... Uh, I don't have a lot to weigh in. I I know it's can be challenging for the community groups, so I don't want to minimize that. But I I do think I I I've, I don't think that any of us would ignore that request. I think it's just more in the context of what you and Ben are sharing. So, um, you know, forward we go. Well, how about progress updates? You know, we we don't know the um, the opt out rate, the opt out opportunity is passed. So, how many people opted out? Right. You know. So we yeah. So we only just and I was actually was gonna um, I had an inquiry today because I received an email um, yesterday from Mass Power Choice, and I my inquiry was, did the other two communities receive something as well? Because I wanted to make sure before I reported out to Leah. Um, and if you just give me one second, I will reference that email. But it was about, just give me one second, sorry. Uh, hold on one second, sorry. Okay, so they didn't actually, so we don't have a number on opt-outs yet. Um, I don't think, let me see. Oh, opt-out, oh, there's an opt-out notice. But yeah, I didn't, all we received was some information about new accounts because apparently, um, they're tracking like when people move um, that there's additional mailings that they have to do to reach new members. And so they were just letting me know that in Amherst and I don't know if Ben. Yeah, um, I got the same. Yeah. Did yours say 784 or did you have a different number? Because uh, you have national was, grid. It was a different number, but okay. I, I mean, I could go try to find it, but yeah. So all they, so we haven't received anything. I don't have anything to report progress wise, because there hasn't been any information. All it's been mainly is, you know, um, mostly right now questions, answering questions that people have. Uh, so we don't have an update at this point. I mean, I would be more than happy to share this email. I will forward it to you. Um, maybe, uh, maybe what we could do is um, both Ben and Tom, if you could share Pelham's with the group, we'll each forward to the whole group, the Valley Green Energy Working Group, these emails, but 
I would say it's just not a whole lot. I'll even do it right now. There's not a lot of information about who opted in and opted out or anything. We just don't know yet. So that it launches on the first, um, they should know sometime soon, right? Um, I would think so. Uh, I don't know exactly when. My guess is it probably, it might not be till like after it, you know, after the first week of November or so, maybe they'll have a final count. Do you think that we could, um, uh, at least at a minimum set up a regular meeting time? You had said once a month, Stephanie? Yeah, I'm happy to set up a once a month meeting just to check in. I mean, there may or may not be something to report out on, but that's okay. I mean, those might be shorter meetings. <laughs> so I'm happy to make it regularly once a month now that things are going. Um, but honestly, I mean, it was, there were a lot of little things I felt like we were having to do over the past, uh, you know, month or two for the launch. So um Anyway, so uh, yes, I'm more than happy. So we should figure out a date and time that works for everybody um, with our schedules. So if we want to maybe try to do that now, I'm fine with doing that right now. Do sorry, Friday. Stephanie. No. Oops, sorry. Go Tom. ahead, Tom. No, I cannot find the email that you're referencing. Um, I wonder where if it come it, from. Um, it would have come from Marlena and Julie Harris. Okay. So I got an email from her, but it was just an update about the mailings. There was no opt-out uh, stats yeah, included. There's no opt-out stats included. Correct. Okay. It's just okay. that. So if you could just forward that email to the group. I don't know if you oh, have enough. I just forwarded it to you. I didn't forward it to the group. That's okay. I'll forward, I'll forward yours okay. along. That's fine. I'm happy to. Um, I don't have it yet, but I will when I get it. I'll forward it to the group. I just sent Amherst's. Um, so, sorry, Darcy, you were starting to say Fridays? Uh, yeah, yes. Well, that's historically, we had met on Friday. Mm -hmm. Fridays. Yep. So, um, I guess the question to folks is, do Fridays still work for a meeting? uh fridays as a general rule yes like fridays uh, typically i think we'd want to do it around one i'm sorry i had to switch today so last minute but um i mean sure going going forward yeah we can so it would be once a month so it'll be you know we can what week are we in in the month we could say the you know the last friday of the month or the third Friday of the month. Let me just look. Sure. Yeah, we're in the, I mean, this is the last Friday of the month. So we could just say the once a month on the fourth Friday or something. So does 1 p.m. still work for people? Yes. Andrew, sure. how about you? Is that good for you? Does this time, day and time work? Yes, okay. I have an occasional, um, every two weeks, an appointment at one o'clock. So I can try to change that. But um, if it's exactly at one o'clock, then that's a problem that, that I, I would have to readjust my schedule. Well, um, do the every two weeks fall on when we would have this meeting? Because if we did it on alternate week, like if we did every three, you know, every third week, are your meetings like on the second and fourth or are they just every two weeks? Um, they're every two weeks. And uh, I, 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 I'm I, having trouble figuring out. Uh, uh, oh, so, so that's the first. Okay, so it would probably be the 15th. And so it, it, the, if, if we're talking about the 22nd, that's fine. Yeah, the 22nd would be our, okay. November Great. 22nd would Thank be you. our meeting. Um, okay, let me just make sure I'm, that may or may not be a great date for me, but we'll figure it out. Um, 
Is there another day if Fridays don't work? Is there another day of the week? Darcy, what are the days that are always bad for you? Tuesdays and Thursdays or? No, now it's Monday and Monday all day and Wednesday afternoon. Okay. So Tuesdays and Thursdays would maybe be okay. I mean, generally Tuesdays and Thursdays are better for me. What about others? It's fine. I can shift some things around. Uh, it, Tuesday tends to be pretty packed for me. Thursday less so. Um, but it, it all changes. <laughs> okay. What about yeah, you, Tom? It's... um. Uh... I, I mean, one o'clock Fridays work. Um, the other days, uh, it's just, um, you know, if I get it on the calendar, I can generally elbow anything else out. So it should work. All right. How about this then? Because I, I think Thursdays might work better for folks. Fridays can sometimes be tricky because if people have weekend plans or whatever and are taking off, um, that could be an issue. And um, it sounds like Adele, that would be problematic for you with your appointment. So would Thursdays work for you at 1 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. So why don't we say Thursdays at 1 p.m.? And what I'll do is I'm going to set up Zoom meetings, like going forward for at least, I'll probably set up like 12 meetings and I will give you, you'll have the dates so that they can, you should accept them so that they're in your calendar. Make sure you get them in your calendar. So that way, Tom, you should have them, you know, populated Correct. going forward. Correct. That's what I meant. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Okay. So why don't I why don't I do that? And then let's say, sorry, I just want to look at a calendar real quick. Um, so the next one would be, I guess, Thursday the twenty first. So which is the week before Thanksgiving, which is good because that that'll work. So, um, so that's Thursday the twenty first is our next meeting. And then I'll, like I said, I'll create a Zoom calendar so that we have them going forward. Is this okay for everybody? I just want to make sure we're all on board. Okay, great, good. Um, all right, and let's see what else we've got. Um, and could we could we make our meetings ninety minutes instead of an hour? Because if we're only meeting once a month. And um, and we have if we start talking about projects because I'm I'm assuming the re reason that we would need meetings is not so much um, taking care of this CCA but just thinking about future projects. Um, Rather than set the meetings for ninety minutes, can we? keep them at 60 minutes and if we think a particular meeting needs more time we would just alert to that i'm just feeling the crunch of time honestly with so much going on and meetings like for me meetings are just the thing that keeps me from getting to other stuff most of the time so if we could just keep it to an hour and then if we if we do need more time like if we know ahead of time like this is a topic that's going to take more time then we can adjust can we do it that way? Like while we're setting up the agenda and say this meeting is going to need another half hour? Uh, I'd like to dedicate a meeting to going over the task force report and recommendation that was made in 2021 just to, to refresh everybody's mind as to what the initial thoughts were. Um, that would probably be a 90 minute meeting, I'm guessing. Um, Do you wanna make that the next meeting? I would love to have it be the next meeting. I'd, what do other people think? Along with a quick update. Yes, yeah, and a, an update on what's going on, <laughs> yeah. Um, ben, you look like you were about to say something. No, no, I mean, that's, it, that's, that's fine with me. Um, it would be nice to not every meeting has has to have or not every agenda item has to have a expected outcome but um you know but i i would 
I would be curious to know what is the expected outcome of the refresh with the, the uh, of that. Um, mainly to have an opportunity for you, Ben, and Tom, especially because Stephanie's been part of the process all mm -hmm. along, to hear from those of us who have been part of the process about what the initial expectations were and why. And so just, you know, so that we can integrate them as we go along. You know, whether or not it's an MOU or a JPE, we can think about what the purposes of having a joint endeavor, you know, why we're working together, what it is that we were planning to do. Because I think that's just valuable for the whole group to have mm -hmm. that past perspective. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. So, uh, so that's that's good. So, so one outcome is that Tom and I have ha have a better understanding of the the enterprise itself um i would would hope that that doesn't take 90 minutes <laughs> right that that should that should be faster than that so i would hope that another outcome would be perhaps a reevaluation of essentially now that we're here now uh you know what from that still makes the prior <laughs> plan still makes sense and what from it it doesn't it doesn't work anymore what are alternatives what you know what are the constraints uh given the current environment that change or or that could change what what is possible or what is what is reasonable yeah no i think i i i was not saying that because i didn't know if it would fly but so i'm glad you said it then <laughs> yeah no that's that's to to me, you know, just just re refreshing history without moving forward does doesn't accomplish doesn't accomplish anything on the ground, and that, that's what I'm really interested in. Yes, we want we want it to accomplish something. Yeah. Okay. okay that's good. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. So that'll be our next agenda focus. All right. Sorry, good. Just... Thank you. It would be fun to invite um, the the authors, um, Dwayne and Dwayne and River did a lot of most of the work on that. Dwayne Brecker and River Strong. Uh, they're on our meeting list still. They still get yeah. everything. They're on the Zoom invitation. They just, I think, Dwayne's retired now, um, and I don't even know what River is doing. So I can reach out to them. I'm always happy to see them and invite them, but I I just am not sure how much they'll, if they'll be able to respond. So just saying that out front, I will do it. But as it is now, they're always invited. So mm -hmm. I didn't know Dwayne was retired. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's, um, yep. He's retired now. Hmm. And we're trying to make sure he doesn't get, um, bothered <laughs> we're trying to not you know reach out to him well, as much as if, possible if he's like me um because i still have a umass email account um <laughs> but i check it very infrequently and then when i do it's like all these people have been reaching out to me and feel hurt that i ignored them <laughs> um lots of people who don't realize that i don't work at umass anymore um so Dwayne, Dwayne may be like that <laughs> Yeah, we haven't. Um, I've intentionally tried not to to reach out to him for things, but yeah. um, you know, every once in a while we get something from him about something he's helping out on. But we've really tried to respect his all the time. He put a lot of time and effort into the solar bylaw working group, so yeah. um, for that alone, he deserves all the rest he can he can get. So, um, okay, so I think. 
This sounds like a great plan. Um, so I think we've got our meeting schedule set. Uh, we've got our next agenda identified, which we should do, I think, you know, for every meeting, obviously, we should try to identify what we're going to do at our next meeting. Um, we'll, so I, I'm still a little confused, I think, are we thinking, you know, 90 minutes will be to review that task force report, review it and talk about reevaluation. So that will take 90 minutes. Are we saying we want to have a 90 minute meeting for that particular session? Because Ben, I was sort of, it sounded to me like you were pushing back on that time frame a little bit. So I want to be clear. Um, I, I mean, I, I feel like if, if I don't want to speak for Tom on this, but I feel like if I, if I can read the document, um, which was shared with me, so I, I have read it, um, you know, that, that I can pre-learn stuff. And if everybody else was there, then they have already learned stuff <laughs> and that we might be able to get into the discussion more quickly. Um, and ge generally speaking, I, I think that meetings that last too long tend to um, suck up a lot of time and you don't get a lot of marginal benefit for the additional 30 minutes. Um but you know, I'm certainly willing to. I mean, I, I I'd be interested in saying, okay, let's try scheduling this one for 90 minutes with an informal commitment to try to get it done, in you know, sooner, <laughs> and see how we do. You know, like okay. learn our, learn our group dynamic that way. I think that's good because that. I mean, I'm I'm willing, more than happy to do that. Um, and I think to your point people reviewing information ahead of time and not waiting to do so during the meeting would, would be really helpful. Um, and maybe what we should focus on is in reviewing that document on our own, bring to the meeting the things that we think need to be reevaluated. How about that? So what we're coming to mainly discuss is the reevaluation, not spending all our time reviewing the document. That sounds good to me. I'm, I'm on board with all of that. Thank you. Okay, sure. Okay. So, and I, you know, we'll, we'll schedule it for 90 minutes, but like you said, with the goal of trying to do it in 60. So, or even 75. So, all right. That sounds good. Um, is there anything else? Um, I think, cause we've covered the agenda, which was essentially, uh, we talked about the MOU, the role of local energy advocates, future programming opportunities. I don't know how much you wanted to say about that today. Um, I'm not sure what you had, you all had mentioned that. So I don't know if you had some specific ideas. What was that again? The So one of the things that was a uh, suggested agenda item from you all was uh, future programming programming opportunities. So I don't know if you had something specific in mind that you wanted to at least mention today, or if that could be another agenda item for a different meeting. I think that um, that would be part of the discussion of the JPE document or the original vision, because um, we know that um, there is an adder that should be coming to us, but we have not um, planned for the use of that adder. But uh, perhaps that is a, a future discussion. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd throw it in there. Okay, so maybe discussion of the adder is really the conversation we want to have. So, and just to be aware, because this is part of the role of the lead community, we are setting up an account so that the adder funds come to an account in Amherst. So we're setting that all up. So the adder funds will come. So we'll be, you know, I'll be able to report out as that money starts to accumulate where we are. I won't know until I, I've reached out to the um, finance director to talk about that. So we'll be setting that up soon because we're in communication with Mass Power Choice about those funds. So anyway, so just so the funds have somewhere to go. Yeah. Relative to that, how much of the original $50,000 from the legislature is still available? Um, I'm pretty sure I want to say we had at least 
25,000, if maybe not more. I haven't looked at it in a while, so I apologize. I'm not, I didn't come prepared to just cite that number today, but I will check. When we have that discussion about the adder, I'll have that information. Great, right. thank so you. So that we know what we have. Um, you know, it's, you know, we, I, I think the point is that we have it, which is great. Um, it's not enough, I think, to start doing anything because if we start doing something, we need to have continued funds to maintain it. So I'm not willing to just throw it out to something and then have it fall flat. So it's got to be maintained. So, um, so we have it. Um, and I will, I will, uh, let's see. Let me, I'm putting this on the next agenda, which might make this a 90 minute meeting. Um, uh, and current funds. I just need to make a note so I don't forget. <clears throat> okay, got it. All right. Um, anything else? You good? Okay. Um, well, I hope everyone, did, who saw the comment? I just have to ask because I thought I saw it and then it turned out that I didn't and I was really disappointed. Did anybody see it? Yep. Oh, did you go out to some beautiful lake or something somewhere and see it? We we tried to get our best view. We couldn't see it. We couldn't see it. Then we came home. And we stood in our neighbor's yard and it and you could see it. It was easier to see with the phone. Like the phone actually revealed it better than the than the bare eyes. But yep. um mm -hmm. And and mostly it was my wife who was just it was not going to quit. <laughs> Good for your wife. I was sort of there, and then I, I think actually my well, last night would have been the last night that you could have potentially seen it. So yeah. Oh well, I think it's somebody bust and another Six. eighty thousand years. I know it's like another 80,000 years. Yeah. So I guess I've missed that one, yeah. but it was really, I thought I had seen it and I was so elated that I thought I saw it. And then somebody burst my bubble and saying, that's not it. And I was so disappointed. <laughs> I thought I could have really lived happily in that kind of ignorance bubble for yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah, why, why'd they do that to you? I don't know. I was really kind of bummed that they did. Yeah. They have, they're a librarian. So I think they're like very committed to, to the truth. <laughs> and accuracy so yeah. um but there's that's kind okay. too, you know <laughs> i know i know i know my daughter was so mad she's like she didn't have to tell you that yeah. <laughs> i was really bummed out anyway <laughs> um but i'm glad you saw it that's great i'm now i'm living vicariously through the people that i know that did so very cool <laughs> all right well um i hope you all have a wonderful weekend enjoy the nice weather and um yeah. Thank you all for everything everybody is doing. Really, I think we've like done tremendous work together. It's really exciting and we're gonna keep doing really cool stuff. So thank you. Yep. Great. Great. All right. Uh, uh, all right. Happy Halloween. Yeah, yeah oh, that's right. Happy Halloween. <laughs> all right, take care. Bye. Bye. Take care.